Yep, and we are live. Boom. We are, and oh. everybody tuning in. We've got <laughs> some plexiglass between look, us. Hold on, look, I can peek around it. Yep. Oh, watch out. All right, we are live, and uh, Raj, you've joined us before. It's been a while. Uh, yes. Since we've had several black adders that we Ooh, picked up, and yeah. we said, mm. let's, let's talk about some black adders. Yeah. All right. So, go ahead and introduce yourself, though, for everybody that's watching. Hi, everyone. Uh, Raj Saberwal. I'm one of the owners of Glass Revolution Imports. Uh, we import whiskey and a few other things, but uh, we, uh, uh, we're we mostly known for Amrit, but we also import Black Adder, uh, Mary McDavid, um, uh, the Firkin, a few other whiskey brands. And uh, this is our 10th, this uh, this year is actually our 10th anniversary of being in so Amrit. Yeah. Of Amrit. Yeah. So. But we're gonna. I think we're gonna focus on black adder today, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, we love the black adder. Cool. If, if we got time, if we branch out towards the end there, oh, if we've yeah. got time for the sure. armor, intermediate sherry, if not, not. But um, we do have a piece of plexiglass in between us now. So for those wondering, actually tomorrow in our area, right. most of the the stay at home order is lifted. Some businesses are allowed to open tomorrow. Right. So I still think you can't get a tattoo still. So tattoo oh, still yeah, you gotta go to you gotta you gotta go to Georgia for that. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> that's right. Georgia. Georgia. Scott's looking to fly, but you know, he was like, Do I fly and risk just to get that neck tattoo I've been trying to get? <laughs> well, that and a haircut, so you know. Oh, I need that. Holy yeah. moly. Oh, I know. My wife said she's looking for a new man, so I let her cut my hair. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Give a Woo. give a short history or just a, a brief synopsis of Glass Revolution Imports and and how that got started when and and kind yeah. of just where you're at now. So we started uh we actually started in 2009. Back then we were known as Purple Valley Imports. Some people might recognize that name, but about 4 years ago we changed it to Glass Revolution uh Imports because we like to think that uh we're revolutionizing what's in your glass. Uh, you know, we're not bringing in the same old stuff. We're bringing in some really unique things. Yeah. And right. um, uh, we, so it's myself and, and my two business partners and we uh, we're the sole source. So everything that comes into the country, we bring in, uh, we're the sole importers for those. And then based on the U S three tier system, we then have to sell to distributors who then sell to uh, retailers and bars and restaurants. Um, and we, uh, are now in about 45 states. So, Beautiful. Yeah. and if you go to if you go to our website glassrev.com, you can see all of our portfolio on there, and uh, even sign up for our newsletter on there, and and uh, keep in touch with what's going on. Great, great. Now, Donnie or Donner Pass, sorry, has his question: um, Is Black Adder a nod to the comedy show with Rowan Atkinson? Atkinson? And I know it's not, but go ahead, Raj. That's a good question. We get that a lot, but no, Black Adder is not. Uh, Black Adder is this year celebrating 25 years in business, and uh, the name comes from uh, Robin Tusick, who owns Black Adder, uh, has a really dry sense of humor. So he uh, reached back into the archives and found out that in um, I think the late eight, late 1700s, there was a British priest named John Black Adder. And um, who was a total, totally against alcohol consumption. He was a total teetotaler. Really? Um, so, so <laughs> uh, Robin took that in, in stride and said, "That's perfect. I'm going to call it Black Adder." Ah. And plus the plus the play on the snake, and he's built everything around the, uh, you know, the snake logo and and uh, uh, doing that. So, you know, what uh, a lot of people do say that, and I sort of think. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of Black Adder, the TV show, uh, which which helps, but uh, there is no relationship. Yeah, your your uh, or the history of the bottled Black Adder goes back long, long ago. So I, yeah, twenty uh, yeah twenty five years this year. Yeah, well, yeah. And, yeah, and then all the way back to old John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the only knew yeah. now that this was not team, uh, he, he would be he would be rolling over in his grave or something. That is so, correct. You know, yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, for those that don't know, Black Adder is an independent bottler. Sometimes they have full disclosure with some of their bottlings, and sometimes they're pretty secretive on what the whiskey actually is. Uh, any reason for that? Well, let's just say, like this one, uh, Puff Adder, we're going to take a look at. 
uh, a blended malt scotch whiskey is pretty much all that they put on there. And then yep. we're going to take a look at one that this is a Black Adder raw cask, mm -mm. Space Side Single Malt from the Balmanoc Distillery, 11 years old. Right. So, I mean, sometimes so, they put that on. Sometimes they tell you what it is. Sometimes they don't. Right. So it all depends on whether or not the distillery will allow that. Uh, there are some distilleries who will not allow independent bottlers to use the name. And the reason they do that is they, um, you know, they, they don't want, they want to keep their own brand to themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but there's nothing wrong. I mean, when you get a, a cask of somebody, something from, you know, uh, Kalila or uh, Lafroig or, or uh, uh, Belvini or something and bottle it, um, you know, that's, and you can, and, and they like you put the name on it. Black Adder will put the name on it, but a lot of times, what happens is the distillery, in order to protect their interests, won't allow that to happen. Um, so where Black Adder can, they will. Um, most of the things that Black Adder bottle are single casks and a cask strength, so it'll always have the number of bottles from that barrel on there, and when it was distilled, when it was bottled. Um, the the one we're trying now, the Puff Adder, uh, that's a brand new release. Uh, the reason it does not have the name of the distillery on it, it is a blended malt. So mm -hmm. it is different single malts that uh, Black Adder acquired and created the recipe for this. Uh, this particular release is uh, was bottled in uh, January 2019. Um, it is 100% ours. We got all of it for the U.S. Um, and the reason he called it puff adder is it does have a slightly higher percentage of uh, peated whiskey in it, peated malt. So giving it that little touch of uh, smoke or that puff. Um, so I don't know if you, if Barton Scott, you have that in your glass, you want to. You bet. Yeah. And what's amazing. Is that I get a lot of beautiful, like malt and cream off of the nose. It is very creamy. I mean, one of the things that Black Adder, especially when we'll look at his raw cast whiskeys, um, that's primarily what they're known for is is very little filtration. So although this Puff Adder is at 46%, it still hasn't received a lot of filtration. Um, one thing that contributes to that richness on the nose is that you still have all the fats and oils in there that give you a lot of the flavor. Yes. So it's not a heavily peated whiskey. Um, you do get that layer of peat right on top of there, but you're getting that sweet. It's almost like a sweet peat, like almost a, mm -hmm. a barbecue pork belly. Very much so. I get a little bit of seaweed, though, at the same yeah. time. Yeah, that yeah. salt. Yeah. Yeah. So that salt would lead you to believe that uh, this is an Isla uh, malted, single malt that's going in there, you know, because you're not, if it's an inland or mainland peated, whiskey, you're not going to get that uh, iodine or that saltiness, but uh, definitely on this. Yeah, the nose is, I mean, some of the creams remind me even like mm. of uh, Glen Kinchy, where I get a lot of mm. creams. It's, it's a very nice balance of peat and, and sweet as well. Yes. Yeah, in the mouth, it's really, it has that sweetness. It has that little pungency, but uh, um, really nice long finish. Nicely balanced. I don't know if you can see Claire the Third is asking. He says, I can't get Black Adder here in Virginia. Any chance it will make it here in the future? Um, well, as uh, everyone who lives in Virginia knows, it's uh, state controlled. So uh, we recently started importing things into or distributing things into Black, into Virginia, uh, including a lot of the arm roots. Um, if you want Black Adder, Go to your local retailer, whoever you deal with, and say, "Hey, we, I want this." And uh, they they have a special order system that they use uh, in Virginia. Um, so the people there will reach out to us and say, "We've got people asking for this, and can you can we get it?" Hmm. Delicious, eh? Okay. Oh, yeah, it's very it's very nice. And I don't know if we said forty six percent. Forty six percent. Yep. Which is the lowest that uh, so ninety two proof? That's the lowest that Black Adder will ever do anything, um, and and that's you know primarily to make it more approachable, stretch it out. Uh, you know this will retail for about seventy five a bottle. So 
That's a real reason price on and very a very good yep. price for it. Oh, yeah. the, the flavors, the uh, that multi, that that roasted, almost kind of like a roasted peanut, a little subtleness in there. The finish is long and clean. Yeah. And that you're right, that light touch of peat just kind of hangs in there. It doesn't come in. It's it's definitely not a punch or anything. It's just that nice float. It's more like sweet peat. It's, mm. uh, on there, uh, there sweet smoke. A lot of a lot of ex bourbon cask influence in some of the whiskeys that's that's in this blend. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I can't disclose what's in it, and that's uh, I wouldn't want to. That's uh, you know a black hat or proprietary blend, and um, it's it's something uh, unique to them. So, do you know? Do you know how many uh, different ones are? Or can you say how many whiskeys are involved in that? I can't. I believe there are five, but I'm not 100% sure. And again, because this is a blended malt, it all it only has single malts in there. There is no grain whiskey in it. Right. So that's the big uh, distinction on there. For those that don't know, if you tuned in a little bit late, we are uh, talking to Raj from uh, Glass Revolution Imports and looking at some black adders, which he imports. Uh, right now, we're looking at the, at the Puff Adder, which was a new addition just for the states. Is that correct? Yep. Well, no, it, it, so this particular release, uh, Scott, is just for the States. Yep. Uh, it's a, an exclusive batch for us, but it was, I believe it is available in Europe and probably mm -hmm. Taiwan and Japan. Um, and fortunately, it arrived just as this whole coronavirus thing hit. So we were unable to get it out into the marketplace. Um, but we, you know, as, as soon as things go to some semblance of normalcy, uh, we will be rolling it out. Now it does have batch batch reference, basically PA01, which I would assume is Puff Adder and the first batch. Correct. Nice. Correct. And yeah. the finish lingers even 30, 40 seconds in. And in that lingering, I get these little touches of like sweet honeycomb. Mm. Man. Yeah, honeycomb, definitely. Yeah, lots of vanilla and a little, uh, I'm not getting much caramel, but I'm certainly getting that honey and vanilla notes on there now for yeah. anybody coming in late we do have a little plexi here <laughs> i keep trying to reach over though let me finger that glass oh what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> oh this is like when you're when you, you shared a room with your younger brother and you put a piece of tape down and you're like don't yeah. come over to my side <laughs> mm, yeah. that is good yeah well, no, would I send you anything that's not good? Come oh, on. you're right. <laughs> you're right. And the very first time when I was in Pittsburgh, I don't know what was it, like eight years ago now. I believe and, so. Yeah, we went and met with, I, I can't remember which uh, whiskey bar we were at, but you were letting the owner uh, look at some different things that they might want to bring in. Yep. And that was the first time I tried a raw cast from Blackadder. Right. And, oh, my God, I, I, I got back, told Scott, man, we got to find this. I haven't even seen this. It was just <laughs> unbelievable. And, you know, Kansas, we, we haven't seen this here either, but we were down in uh, Oklahoma City, and right. Scott's like, oh, uh, hey, they got all kinds of black adder, and we, like, rushed rushed that part of the shelf. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and that's because, uh, well, Raj, you had posted on Instagram pictures mm. from, uh, it's the well, Wine and Spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram, it's the well of OKC, uh, all the Alm Roots, the black adders. Oh. Um, what was that one we got to sample that he didn't have it any longer? It was the um, oh, smoke and Isla or something. Smoking, oh, smoke and Isla. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, oh, we tried to sample. I'm like, Where's this? You've <laughs> got to have one around. He's like, Nope, that's yeah. gone. I'm like, No, no, we will, we will have more coming in later this year, but it's uh, oh. yeah, so smoking Isla is one of those uh, ones that are uh, another black header preparatory. Mm. Um, it's it'll either be a blended uh, malt or a hundred percent Isla malt, uh, but it's always from Isla. Um, it has two of two of the um, probably peatier, smokier Isla distilleries in it. Um, mm. I know what they are, but I'm I'm reluctant to tell you what they are. Mm, you're just um, teasing me. You're just and, teasing. And, me. and it, there's been ones occasionally where he's uh, Robin's finished those in sherry or. Or even uh, I think he may have used a rum cast, but sherry definitely. There's some sherry finished smoking olives. 
Okay, Keep right. us in mind. We really will have nice. on the show. We'll do whatever we need to do. <laughs> but we will. We just changed distributors in Kansas. So uh, our new our new distributor, hopefully, will start bringing Black Adder and some other things into your fair state. Mm, mm. And you lean on them. Wichita. I will. Land some, not just KC, baby. Wichita. No, no, no. They're actually based. I think they're based in Wichita. It's Perfect. uh yeah. Um, Are you able to say who it is? I know it doesn't matter to non-Kansas people. Uh, Beverage World, I think, or mm. is that what they're called? Uh, uh, now we've got their standard, which I think is the biggest. Yeah. Glacier. Glacier. And yep, not Glacier. Okay. Well, there might be you know, smaller There's ones. A, I'm trying to think of the other, the main, the main, the third one, but. Hmm. Uh, Carl Van Volgem says, I uh, love the Black Adder raw cask releases. He just killed a Bunahaven 10 year mm, Black nice. Adder raw cask. He says, one nice. of the best bottles he's ever had. And that was so when we did stop at the well, the first time that we stopped at the well, OKC, uh, one of the bottles that we picked up was a, a raw cask. Pete oh, Reek. Yeah. Pete Reek raw cask. And this is one of the secretive ones because all we know is that this is a 10 year old Isla whiskey. Mm. And so it's interesting because I, I, this is another Pete Reek that I have. Um, this one does not, it, it only says single malt Scotch whiskey. Uh, it does not say Isla on it. Um, so, and it doesn't have an age statement, whereas the one you have does. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that uh, whereas smoking Isla is always going to be from Isla, uh, peat reek can, is a peated, 100% peated malt, and it can be from Isla. If it is, it'll say it like the one you have. If it's not, then it will just say single malt Scotch whiskey, and it's uh, probably it's most likely a, an island or a highland peated malt. Hmm. So there's only a, a couple of um, a couple of distilleries uh, that do they continually do peated malt uh, on the mainland. Oh, I do a little ring a ding ding here. Hey. Little cowbell. Little cowbell. We had a super chat come in from Swami over at Malted in Montreal. Good afternoon, Swami. Mm -hmm. Swami, Swami. Nice. Swami. Nice. Nice. Um, so I don't know if you want to. Do you have that P week open? You want to. Yeah, you bet. Mm. Um, well, it's, I don't powerful. Know, it's powerful. You can open it. <laughs> Do you want yeah. some? Hold on, hold on. That's one of my favorite oh. Scott. I've been drinking straight from the bottle. I don't know if <laughs> I can try that one. So, little hey, Scott, be before you before you open it, I, I don't know if you want to uh, shake, give it a shake, and show people the yeah. uh, the yeah. floaties in there, or uh, you know, you can yeah, moving. turn it upside down, and you can. Or I'll I'll do that with this one. Do you know what upside down is? Yeah, I did. I did. I had it upside <laughs> down. I don't know what it is. So, oh, there you go. There you go. And yeah. You see them. So if you if you want to come back to mine, you'll see. Hopefully, um, yeah, you oh, can yeah. see all those floating Ooh. in there. So uh, some people like to call this the whiskey snow globe, um, but it is also it is raw cask, meaning that it has had very little filtration. Um, it has barrel char in the bottles. Every bottle will have some barrel char in it and, um, it retains all the fats and oils. So raw cask uh, refers to what, uh, Robin likes to say. It's the, the way whiskey used to be. So yeah. in the, in the early, you know, early 1900s, if you went into a, a pub in Scotland, uh, there would not be a wall of whiskey like Scott and Bart have behind them. Uh, you would just say to the barkeep, "Give me a, give me a whiskey," and they would just pull it right from the barrel uh, on the floor. Uh, mm. So you're getting all that richness, all the fats and oils, which give you a lot of flavor. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I, I'm not a big proponent of uh, filtering or chill filtering, especially because I think when you chill filter, you strip out a lot of the flavor components of a whiskey. Those rich oils, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, for for those for those of your uh, audience who are wine drinkers, it's very similar to uh, a wine that's been uh, unfined and unfiltered. So you get you know you get that uh, the grape sediment in there, you get all the flavors in there, and when you when you fine and filter it, just like with whiskey, you're stripping out some of the stuff. Oh, 
My goodness. Isn't that delicious? Now, we uh, we did a review of this one, and it's a couple years old now, or a Mm. year and a half at least. Mm. One of the things we did talk about was the price point on this, because it is one of the pricier ones. Right. This one was $160 or $180 in that range. I said, get me another. It's a, well, yeah, yeah that's, that, that came up because Bart literally yeah. uh, bought another one. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But, Scott, if you pick up the bottle, it'll tell you, it'll say how many bottles are mm-hmm. were out of that cask. I think 200 and something or 318. Oh, this one so is, it was, uh, this one's 58.1% and it's sherry okay. cask finished. Right, so 318, so it was probably in a sherry butt, mm-hmm. uh, allowing more juice out of there, and uh, 318 bottles, so no no water added to it, non-chill filtered, uh, very light filtration, and uh, bottled it at full cast strength. Uh, it is from one particular Isla distillery who does not allow independent bottlers to use their name. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but if you if you're if you're an Isla aficionado you could probably figure out what it is a uh, real shout shout out real quick to nd burrow he just started drinking scotch during the pandemic and has learned a lot a lot watching our channel wow oh that's you. great some of it some of it true some of it not yeah right yeah great time to start <laughs> by the way you want to enjoy a pandemic you want to grab some black adder <laughs> there you go there you go if you can i'm sure some of uh some of the delivery services have it and can bring it out to you so mm. Yeah, and at least in Kansas, the uh, liquor stores were deemed essential. Yeah, everywhere except for my old state of Pennsylvania, where the uh, governor decided it was not essential and shut down all the stores. And I saw caused... all that as soon as the notice went out, there were packed liquor stores. Oh, it's insane. And I, I know, and I was like, there's the problem. So, yep. They've started now, they're starting to do curbside service. Um, very limited, like I think 50 to 75 orders per day per store, um, which is, you know, still not sufficient enough to meet the demand. Uh, consumers were, you know, going to Delaware and, and West Virginia and uh, other states to, to try and bring stuff over. And uh, then the governors of those states said, no, we're not, you know, you can't sell to people from out of state. It has to be only to the state. So, uh, interesting dilemma to deal with, and and we'll see <laughs> what happens uh, in the election, whether or not uh, the governor retains his seat or not. But uh, I'm just guessing. No, <laughs> <laughs> you get. Well, you know, I mean, let's, you know, Pennsylvania is a you know is an, an old Quaker state, so it does have a history of of uh, restraint. So uh, yes, we'll we'll see. History will tell. Yeah. So. That's interesting. Somebody, I, I just saw somebody just put up there about drinking an Irish whiskey. And why don't we pull out the uh, Blackadder drop of Irish, which you have, right? Oh, yep, yeah, we do. Matter of fact, where's so, that one? bottom uh, there in the Irish whiskey shelf at the on the back far right? Should be right there. Got it. So one of the things that uh, another non-disclosed uh sorry a drop of the irish is an irish single malt so this is an eight-year-old single malt uh i'm not sure scott and bart which one you have uh, let's see what does it say uh drop of irish single malt um there this is a 2018 bottling there's 265 okay. bottles okay and that's all it says. So this is a 2016 bottling, and there's 366 bottles, uh, bottled at 58% alcohol, 116 proof. Well, and, and this one was this one was I was disappointed by once I picked it up because this was a 46% bottling. Ah, and all right, the other right, right. adders I had picked up were all you know cask strength or right. up in the 50s and 60s. And then I got home and I was like 46%. Yeah, <laughs> now, you know again, so you. You, you save some money on it rather than buying the cast strength. But yeah. Uh-huh. That most too. of what we bring in is the cast strength, but this is the, the, the one I have is the cast strength one, 58% alcohol. Um, and, and being an Irish single malt, uh, this is, you know, hundred percent from Ireland. It is uh, a distillery that I think was sold a number of years ago, but makes great, great whiskeys. Hmm. Man, that 10 year Isla. Cast strength is good. Oh, you, know, you want the Irish? 
No, I'll hold. I'm you holding out for that other one. Oh yeah. So that's uh, that's one that's uh, that's really good, and and uh, you know the uh, but most of like most of what Black Adder does is name the distillery on there. So something like uh, you know twenty nine year old uh, Cambus, mm. uh, which is a single grain. Cambus is a closed distillery. Uh, this one there was only two hundred seventy four bottles, and uh, you know after twenty nine years there's only forty six percent left, but mm. that's a, that's still cast rig. So. Mm. The, uh, What's Food Quick saying up here? It's nearly bedtime for my afternoon nap before work. Oh. I'm sipping on a on an Egan's ten year old Irish whiskey. All that's right. what. That's what made me gravitate towards the Irish. The black had a drop of Irish. Mm. Uh, oh, he says he had a uh, sample of the drop of Irish a couple of years back. Uh, good mm. juice. Yep, yeah, it cer certainly is. Woo. It's really rich and and. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not your typical Irish whiskey because, again, it's an Irish single malt. Let me just sip off your glass. So it's going to be a little richer. What? <laughs> <laughs> you well, don't want to be doing that, man. Oh, he, he can circle it with whiskey or something. <laughs> yeah. I know. We're just kidding. Plexiglass for those watching. That's right. There is glass. Right, there there the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mark wanted yeah. to come over as if we need yeah. something. I haven't been, I've been working straight through this bad boy out on yep. the street. So... Yeah. Well, thanks for everything. Thanks for everything you're doing, Bart. I know it's not easy. You well, know. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Everything that's going on. So, uh, I'm not sure. Murray Lee says uh, Scotch Test Dummies was my first channel to know about whiskeys. It's been four months now, and I'm mm -hmm. almost hitting over ten scotches based on Scott and Bart's reviews. Thanks for introducing him to the Scotch world. Oh, well, thank you. Nice. That's nice. Good. Good job. That's great. The more people we get uh, drinking this. The better. Oh yeah, um, but we also need people drinking uh, more sherry and port and uh, other fortified wines, so that distilleries can use those casks to yeah. age the whiskey oh, in right. to create some delicious whiskeys. Now, Scott, you love sherries. Have you picked up any or sherried whiskeys? Have you picked up any sherries recently? Uh, with Black Adder or outside? no? Just just pure Not sherry. sherry. Just, um, I've got a 16 year Deanston or just pure sherry. No, sherry. Oh, sherry wine. Yeah. Sherry wine. No, sherry wine. Yeah, sherry wine. No, no. All right, because you love it. I think you would dig it. Yeah, I did. Sherry's have, great. We bought, we bought a bottle for the 12 Hours of Boom we last did. year uh, when we had Monique on. Yes, and I took that and I sipped on that. It was good. I it really is. Liked yeah, because Monique, when we met Monique and and KC at a Scotch Crawl, she was like, "You need to start helping out the sherry industry and buying yep. some sherry." Absolutely. You're right, yeah, and and there's great. I mean, you can get some good good sherry that for for not too much money. No, you can get some nicely aged sherries for you know really decent prices. Very, yeah. yeah. And uh, Graham Frazier is asking, oh, is it the Black Adder Canvas just mentioned in the live stream? Yep, that's what Raj has there. Twenty twenty nine years old. Is that twenty nine year old? Yep, single grain. Um, that's a this good. This is a uh, this is a closed distillery. Um, Cambus was shut down because, um, for a number of reasons, United Distillers, uh, formerly uh, before Diageo, thought that it was producing a really rich uh, spirit, which uh, was, I don't know, maybe too rich to go into their blends that they were using because most of the single grain that gets produced does go into blends. Um, mm -hmm. But if you can find Cambus anywhere, um, get it. It's, it's amazing. Cambus, Port Dundas. Two closed uh, grain distilleries, you know, just make delicious stuff and, and really good, really, really tasty uh, product. I, I like to call single grain whiskey as the the other scotch. And it's for, for people, friends of yours who think that, oh, I only drink bourbon. Mm -hmm. Get them to try single grain because single grain is made the same way bourbon is. Uh, the only difference is it's, it's not going into necessary new oak it's going right. to ex-bourbon casks yes uh, and a lot of them are aged you know 20 plus years uh i've seen some 50 55 year old single grains because they can take the age mm -hmm. and uh, in fact we have a we have a barrel of canvas right now that two years ago we transferred into a sherry cask to finish um so our plans are were to bottle it sometime this year it'll be 33 years wow um, but we'll we'll see how long this uh uh, pandemic th situation lasts. Mm. 
Uh, Aaron Hardiman is asking, are there any new uh, type of cask finishes that you see on the horizon? That's a good question, Aaron. We're seeing a lot of uh, wine casks being used, and, and especially with the lifting of some restrictions in Scotland as to what type of casks can be used. Uh, you know, I think somebody recently did a mezcal cask finish, um, but for for more ordinary things, we're seeing uh, Madeira, Marcella mm -hmm. being used a lot, uh, red wine casks, uh, Burgundy casks. Um, you know, nice thing with those old wine casks is that they've seen a lot of use, and there's a lot of nice fruit that's in there that's going to be extracted once you put the uh, the whiskey in there. Um, and uh, what else? The uh, even white like Chardonnay cask. Uh, uh, Glenn Fiddick recently did a, a cuvee cask, which was mm. finished in a uh, champagne cask. They could call it champagne, but the cuvee reference was to champagne. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. it was, that was 21 years old, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was finished. I don't, it wasn't aged for the entire time in the cuvee. I believe it was finished, cuvee finished. Uh, rum, we're seeing a lot of rum casks being used to uh, age or finish whiskey in. Uh, really nice harmony, especially a peated whiskey in a rum cask is it's just fantastic. Mm. Um, do 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 does Black Adder release whiskeys that don't reach the U.S. Yes, that maybe just European only releases. Well, we so we are the U.S. is the uh, I think second or third largest export market for Black Adder. Uh, most of Black Adder goes to. Um, Taiwan and Japan are, are big yeah. markets for them, uh, Japan especially, and, and the rest in Europe. Uh, Robin Robin lives part time in in Sweden, and so a lot of his releases end up in Sweden. Um, but we try to bring in whatever we can. Uh, unfortunately, right now with the tariff situation, uh, we you know it's twenty five percent added on to the price, so. Mm. Single malts are being affected that way. Single grains and blends are not. Uh, so we're pr primarily focusing on on that to bring in. Um, I just brought in a 22-year-old Westport. And Westport is a blended malt. It's what's called a teaspoon whiskey. Uh, so it's when sister distilleries uh, will take a cask of something and add, allegedly add a teaspoon of the other whiskey in there so it cannot be sold as a single malt but it's 99.9% .9 of that uh, particular distillery. Perfect. So if, if you find those, there's some interesting ones out there. Uh, Kevin McComer, a good point that, that you were kind of, that you discussed a little bit and some people don't know, but he asked, what do you see for consumer reception to grain whiskeys versus malt whiskeys? There are some very old and exquisite grains mm, on the market, yeah. but it seems like very little attention. Yeah, well, then, Kevin, that's a good, it's a good thing people are paying little attention to it because it means we get to keep it all. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but but and, and they're quite know, a bit I, cheaper. I think I, you know they are cheaper. They're a lot, a lot of times you can find yeah you can find a lot of times you know a thirty year old grain whiskey for you know two hundred to three hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and and so. I, I think I think as uh, Kev, you know Kevin, as consumers learn more about them and uh, uh, appreciate what what they're all about. Um, I think they'll start gravitating towards them because the certainly the as Scott said the price point is great on there. Um, I uh, I'm a big big lover of, of single grain whiskeys um, and have quite a few in my collection. And I did a I think last year I, I did a a tasting. We did five different single grains uh, just to compare them and see what the you know what the consumer uh, reaction was, and it was it was quite good. You know because it's Delicious whiskey, well priced, uh, easy drinking. Uh, as I said earlier, it's it's something that your uh, bourbon only friends, uh, if they tr if they try those single grain whiskeys, I think they'll get a bigger appreciation for Scotch whiskey as a as a whole. Yes, I agree. Let's take a look at uh, real quick though. I would add if you're interested um, in grain whiskeys, I think the Compass Box Hedonism line um, is outstanding for those. That uh, yeah. you know, it's blended grains, but and some of the special releases that John Glazier has done from the latest, the Muse, which is just outstanding. 
Uh, mm. well, there are a lot of, I think, 30 and maybe even some 40-year-old green whiskeys in that one, but it's very good stuff. Let's move on to the uh, you sent as well. This uh, Balmenic. Balmenic. I said Balmenoc, yeah. and I wondered earlier if that was right. Balmenic. Balmenic. This is a uh, Black Adder raw cask. This is bottled at 58.5%. An 11-year-old cherry cask finish. Yep. Uh, it, and it is also listed as a Speyside malt whiskey. 268 bottles. And I have bottle 147. I don't know what bottle you have there. 150. Ooh. 150. Ah, there you go. There you Reading. go. Reading. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Balmanic is something that you rarely see bottled as a single malt because most of their production goes into blends. Um, you know, that's the other thing with, with independent bottlers, you can get a number of um, single malt whiskeys that you rarely see because they're all going into, into blends and you will rarely see them come out of um, the distillery being releasing them. So, Yeah, and this is actually a distillery that I haven't had wow. anything from. Oh, you're going to like this. I've already had oh, it. Oh, you've had it, yep. haven't you? Yep. Yeah. I cracked them and had to give them a little sample. Mm. Ah, yeah the, yeah, the quality control on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know Bart would have done the same. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't keep yeah, this under a bushel. I will tell you, though, the sherry finish in this, it's a lot lighter. This is, it really feels, I mean, it's, it's that Highland it's almost uh, along the lines of, of Tomatin, not to bring up another distillery, but it's really that Highland kind of softer side, malty, uh, lighter, sweeter, lighter, sweeter sherry notes. It's not a really uh, deep Oloroso note, you know, or anything like that. It's just, it's light and it's sweet and it's malty. Well, it was sherry finish. So a finish usually means about nine months to a year in that cask. Um, so just primarily to give it some of the, the flavor profile and then obviously the the color a little richer color is coming from the uh, the sherry cask influence as well uh you know you're still at 58.5 or 117 proof which is quite high alcohol strength but the nice thing about black adder is you can drink these neat oh yeah 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 you can I add a little, a little water especially for something like this or something closer to 60 uh, percent alcohol will open it up on the nose and you'll get a little more uh, flavor uh, no aromas coming through but because you're not chill filtering and you're not stripping out a lot of the uh, goodness of it you you can this is really nicely balanced yeah I get like uh, reminds me of uh, of grandma's lemon cookies I don't know why I get ah. that sweet and that lemony citrus mm, very citrusy yeah yeah very citrusy Wow. Yeah, nice finish on it. You do get, I think on the finish, right in the mouth, you do get that the sherry notes, that that fruitiness, nuttiness coming through on there. Um, it's not prevalent right up front, but it, it does have a nice finish like that. Uh, lighter. I mean, uh, think raspberries, think yep. um, blueberries, strawberries. Don't think, not plums, not raisins. No, no. But a little bit of like kitchen spice note in there too. Little cinnamon, little nutmeg, a lot of just juicy fruits. That's very interesting. Very nice. Mm. Nice and rare. How uh, uh, about how many bottlings does Black Adder release a year? Um, they'll do probably. Let me think. Maybe sixty to a hundred hmm. per year, so not a lot. I mean, they're you know on the scale of independent bottlers, they're not like uh, Gordon McPhail, which which is the largest, or uh, Murray McDavid, who we import, which is probably the the next largest in size, or close to it. Um, Black Adder is is relatively small. They don't you know um, they're very Robin's very fussy about what uh, what gets bottled and what's available. Um, he he's a real believer in the cask. Um, those you know those of your 
audience who are Scotch drinkers and know 60 to 70 percent of the flavor if the whiskey is coming from the barrel, right? So getting the right barrel, making sure that it's a good quality cask is really important. And uh, if if he has something that you know he tests it and says, oh, this this isn't quite right. He may uh, put it into another barrel to finish off uh, or age longer. Uh, so maintaining that quality of cask is is really important. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I get that with him. You know, where you referenced Gordon and McPhail. I don't get the feeling that Blackadder is trying to be this large mass producer. Um, I mean, they, to me, they want, and like I say, every bottle we've had, we haven't oh. been disappointed in. Everything's been phenomenal. But no. I, it, it's literally, I get the feeling that, you know, these are hand-picked casks that are just nothing but the best, really. Um, he, I don't think he's going to bottle anything and put out there if it's not premium, if it's not, no. if it's not something nice. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a family business. Um, Robin is sort of slowly handing over the reins to his uh, son and daughter, uh, to move forward with the business. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, they they understand what uh, Robin established and wants to continue doing. And I think they will continue that as well. Mm. Um, you know, the independent bottlers uh, rely upon good relationships with the distilleries that they can make sure that they get the right barrels, they get constant supply of things. And, uh, and they... Uh, you know, it's hard to get your pick and choose of what you want, but uh, uh, it's 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 good knowing that they can get some things that other people might not be able to get. And wouldn't that be nice if, if dad was like, hey, son, come with me. I'm going to show you how to pick good barrels and <laughs> and, and we're going to sample some things. I'd be like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. so that's, that's fun, especially, you know, spending, spending a, a few days, well, I can't, I mean, I, I've spent time with Robin, you know, for uh, at different whiskey shows and different uh, and traveling with him. But uh, uh, being his, I don't know, being his son, I don't know, that that would be, you have to get used to his jokes because he's uh, got quite the dry sense of humor. So, <laughs> yeah. so if you, can, if you can put up that, put up with that, your re, uh, rewards are the whiskey that uh, is coming out of there. Mm. Yeah. What has, um, as far as the pandemic goes, Raj, has, how have you been impacted? Have, have you had a lot of stuff canceled? Great or? question. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I haven't, uh, as, as you guys know, I spend most of my time on a plane going somewhere, uh, oh. whether domestically or internationally. Uh, my last trip was at the beginning of March. I went to, I was in Ireland uh, with my, with my brother uh, as a, he had taken me for a, a late birthday celebration. So that was a lot of fun. We got to, Drink a lot of Irish whiskey and 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 really explore Ireland, um, but since then a lot of the shows that we were that I was going to a lot of the events that I was going to been canceled, um, postponed. Uh, I've been doing a lot of virtual ones like this. Um, I have a couple coming up this week that I'm doing either for private groups or or um, specific retailers or clubs, and you know I think that's becoming the norm sort of to. To say, and I, you know, I think you get a lot out of doing something for a small group because it's always more intimate. You know, when you're uh, at a whiskey, and there's thousands of people there, or even 500 people. Uh, you know, being able to spend time with everyone is very difficult. And uh, you know, all you're doing is pouring whiskey and and you know, trying to chat with people, and that's that's hard. Um, so I think that's impacted us. Um, I think the other thing is that. Obviously, bars and restaurants, uh, which are suffering tremendously through this, are, are you know that that makes up a, a certain percentage of our business, and that's impacted because obviously they can't buy and and sell, and, and they don't have the consumer base coming in. Um, I think that's going to be a long time before we see uh, the bars and restaurants returning to what everyone's used to. Right. Even if they do reopen, I mean, I think that. We need to still continue practicing uh, social distancing, um, you know, just maybe even still wearing masks because, you know, this, from my own personal experience, this, 
this virus, you know, you know, you, you could have it and not know you have it because there's a lot of asymptomatic people out there yeah. uh, that have it. And, and uh, it's, you know, the numbers don't tell the true story. Um, so, I, you know, God bless those places, the states that are opening up and allowing things to open up. And I hope that everything works out. But, uh, you know, I'm taking it very cautiously. Sure. Yeah, and you're you're always on the go. Even when we hung out in Pittsburgh, I mean, uh, first of all, nothing better than walking into a whiskey bar than with you, because it was like <laughs> I was with Norm from Cheers. You come in, they're like Raj, and and like people are coming out, and then the owners running around, and they're like, "Who's with you?" And all of a sudden, I was like, I was like hanging out with Elvis, <laughs> and, and they were like, "Come on up here, come on up yeah. here," and then, and then you were like, "Hey." Uh, to the owner, you're like, do you have that Sullivan's Cove French Oak, the number one? He's like, yes, it's beneath the bar upon yeah. West only. So I yeah. got to sample that even because I was with the rock star. There you go. That was a, that was a, a Acacia. We were at Acacia in, in uh, exactly. Pittsburgh, I think. My yeah. memory's terrible. Yeah. Scott yeah. knows this. Acacia was awesome. Yeah, but walking in yeah. with you, you had like a briefcase handcuffed to yourself. Not <laughs> But no, you had this secret briefcase, and they were like, yeah. oh, what'd you bring? And they were all excited, yeah. and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah, well, you know, you got you got to share the love, right? You just can't keep it all to yourself, so. Oh, it was you know, great. There's, uh, like, well, there's the, yeah. like having, like, the, the briefcase that everybody wants what's inside. I mean, and, and you you even told me that when you had Sullivan's Cove and and you couldn't get rid of it, you had cases or pallets and pallets, and then boom! Oh, it it, it, that's that's such a funny story, Bart. That you remember that? I mean, when we were the importer of it, you know, it was like people are saying, "Oh, you know, I don't I don't know if I'm going to spend like a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars on a on a Australian single malt whiskey." Yes. Um, you know, and so we were selling dribs and drabs of it, and the day that they won uh best single malt in the world uh you know our the phone didn't stop and people are saying hey do you how much do you have left i'll take it all i go you know this is the same stuff we were sell, trying to sell to you a month ago you didn't yeah. want it you know so you know unfortunately it, it fortunately or unfortunately it it uh it takes a, a little something to uh wake people up and and get them to recognize what there is and and uh sure. you know I don't, we don't, uh, you know, unfortunately we don't import Sullivan's Cove anymore. We do have a couple of other Australian uh, single malt whiskeys and Australia is making some incredible whiskeys. Yes. There well, are, that's a good sign of what you're doing as well. I mean, you're literally introducing folks and what a great time, you know, on yeah. route and, you know, you're introducing folks and, and like that. I mean, if I had somebody say, hey, I want all you got. Well, you know what? You know, hold on. Acacia bought one before it was hot. You know, I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to let them pick up some, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For yeah. sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, do a little cowbell real quick Ooh. for Eric Waite. He gave $5 super Ooh. chatted a little bit ago. The sniper. Oh, nice. Nice. The nice. Sniper. Now, is there any, is, uh, is glass, so is glass revolution imports. Is there anybody out there right now that you're trying mm. to bring in? Yeah. Anybody a little bit of love. You want to, uh, we, um, we will have, I, I mean, I won't mention the name of the distillery, but uh, it, uh, we're still we're still finalizing details. But we will have uh, a brand new well, two. One one is a brand new Irish distillery, Irish single malt distillery. Oh yeah, that, hold, on. Uh, hold on, has not even been has not released anything yet. Oh, well, I and, think we know. I think and, we won't uh, say anything. They might they might have something to to do with um, uh, glassware. Oh, uh, have mercy. So, there's a hint. <laughs> um, and the uh, the whiskeys will be incredible uh, once they're oh. once they're out. So uh, they will Thank be you. later, uh, ready later this year and, and available. And and uh, we'll just say um, make it know. rain. Make it rain is maybe a hint. I don't know. It's uh, no, uh, no. I, I think I'm, you're going, I'm, uh, going, I think on, you're, going off of the last name of the gentleman. Come on. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good, Bert. Very good. Very good. Very good. Obscure. I got a negative. Very good. That was, that was good. I like that. I like yep. that. Yeah. And it yeah. was too obscure. Yeah. And the other one we're doing is a, a Japanese, a brand new Japanese single malt uh, distillery, um, Shizuoka. 
mm-hmm. and they are doing everything, uh, you know, old school, uh, including trying to work with some local farmers to grow Japanese barley. Mm. Um, the uh, they bought uh, the owner bought all the old Karazawa equipment um, and was able to salvage one of the stills, the uh, masher and a couple of other pieces of equipment. The other two stills are on display in the warehouse. Um, so it's really interesting because he has the one Karazawa still and the one Selkirk still and the new make that comes off of those are totally different. Mm. Um, so some of his whiskeys will only be the Karazawa or the Selkirk still, and some of the other ones will be a blend of the new make from the, the two different stills. Um, excited about that. The, uh, they just turned, I think, last December, three years old for their, their first whiskeys. And uh, uh, the first releases were uh, just in Japan. Um, they obviously were planning to do a big launch uh, around the Olympics, but that has been postponed. So um, it'll probably be next year sometime before we have the first uh, U.S. release for them. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm excited so now. Those are the only two uh, that I have liberty to speak about right now, but yeah. Yeah, and the one's still uh, kind of secret. <laughs> and then we we do have our own uh, uh, label uh, our whiskey is called Dram Hunter, which uh, are single barrels that we're sourcing. Uh, we just did two releases, both from a closed distillery in Australia. Uh, oh. The first one only yielded 50 bottles, and it went to one particular uh, retailer, oh. uh, Norfolk, Norfolk Wine and Spirits in Massachusetts. That is long gone, and um, I think they're they're going to buy the other uh, cast that we bottled as well, and oh. uh, that'll be exclusive to them. So there's 150 bottles for that. Um, what was, uh, and, some, some details on that first one that was only 50 bottles. How old was it? And uh, so it was so Southern Coast Distillery um, closed. I'm trying to remember when. Um, maybe four or five years ago, because not because they weren't doing anything good. It was just the business partners had a falling out. Uh huh. So the uh, uh, the new one of the partners who started a new distillery called Tin Shed Distillery, and he his bottles are bottled under the name Inequity. Uh, we do have some of uh, their whiskey as well. Um, I a couple of years ago when I was down in Australia, I uh, convinced him to sell us the last two barrels that they had. So, like I said, one was sort of a, a mixture of two different barrels and what was left, and and there were. 50 bottles that came out of it Ooh. and the uh the other one uh barrel 112 um was a couple of different ones and it was recast into a port cask uh to finish off and came off 150 bottles but it's still like 60 sorry i'm just gonna grab it uh, yeah all right 50 sounds like a good round number i'm yeah. gonna bet so this this, this one this one was, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see it, 100, yeah, 150 bottles. So this is our label, Dram Hunter. Mm. Um, this was a seven-year-old. Oh, here, just um, But it was, oh, sorry, I'm going to blow it up. Nice. And Now, as soon as you started talking about the business falling out, I think I remember that from uh, Whiskey Cast, Mark Gillespie talking about that. That was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? And then they had all the whiskey had been, uh, just all that whiskey that had been distilled and was sitting in those casks and they were having to go to court to basically kind of yes. decide what to do with it. Correct. Yeah. Cause everybody yep. was fighting over it. Yep. Yeah. That was one of them. There's a, there's a couple of other situations like that in Australia too, but, um, but this is it. I mean, th- this one and the other one that there will be no more of uh, anything from that distillery. So, mm. you know, well, yeah, I was uh, joking. I said 50 sounds like a round number. I got a feeling there were, Fifty-one point two five. You got a two five somewhere. <laughs> well, obviously, I have one of them uh, sitting right here. So, you know, it's it's. Uh, yeah, you, you got like a big uh, one point seven five liter side. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just trying to find the other one. Just give me a second. Let me find that. Uh... A quick shout out to Ms. Gracie. Ms. Gracie oh. says, "Been able to wear your shirts at work because no one knows what Pete is." Woohoo! Uh, well, probably the, about like the one. I don't know if she's. Uh, 
referencing the same one. I love the peak I'm wearing. Peak. Oh, I think maybe that, or I love the peak. That might be it. Yeah. So this is this is the other one, and this is the uh, uh, the one that's still available. Uh, 150 bottles off it. Uh, it is still uh, seven years old because that was the youngest, and it is 57.1 percent alcohol. So it held a fair bit, but you can see that. Yeah, look at that. On the port cast that it was finished in. Rich. Yeah. Yep. And is that that's Australian as well? Yeah, they're both of these were from the same uh close distillery, southern coast. And you think that one's still but, available? What do they sell online? Yeah. Uh they do they do, but the unfortunately the thing with Massachusetts is they can't ship out of state. So uh, Brutal. They sell, but you have to have somebody you know in mass to be able to get you one. Mm. Um, or you have to know somebody in the industry. Goodness. Hint, hint. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might know somebody. I think, we, uh, I think we've had a good hour. We're just yeah. out of our one hour mark, so I think we can wrap it up. Anything else you want to add in? Uh, no, I, I mean, just, uh, I, again, I appreciate the time uh, for both of you. And, and uh, like you said, it's been a, been a while since I've been on, but uh, really, really appreciate um, this. And uh, I think that, uh, um, you know, people just need to be safe and, and uh, be uh, the temptation when you're stuck at home is to, oh, let me open that bottle. And, and uh, I think still drinking in moderation is, is important. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. That's the important thing, um, but support your support your local distilleries, support your small businesses. Uh, they they need it. They count on it. If any of your bars and restaurants where you live are doing uh, cocktails to go yeah. or anything, you know, support it. You know, it doesn't matter if you can make a cocktail at home. These guys, you know, they they've been there when you needed to be, and let's be there for them. You bet. And there's nothing better than when you got a shelter in place to shelter in place with some black adder. I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Not the TV show, but the whiskey. There you go. There's nothing, right. nothing wrong with watching the TV show while you're drinking the oh, whiskey. Oh, yeah. You can just make all the worlds collide. There you go. <laughs> Be like a Twilight Zone kind of thing. That's so. it. Yeah. All right, Roger. Well, thanks for tuning in or thanks for joining us. Appreciate yeah. it. And uh, it's always we'll be signing pleasure. off. So that's it. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. So cheers, guys. Dummies. Thanks, Raj. Pleasure. All right. Cheers. Take care. Bye.